All right, here we are. I apologize. We are four minutes after seven. Um, we're having a, a little technical difficulty. Dr. Mike Kingsley is connecting, uh, but we're having have a few issues. So we're working through that and he hopefully will be with us in a moment. So I welcome everybody. Uh, I hope that you didn't come and then leave because I was four minutes late. Um, please come back. Um, I'm going to just share a few thoughts with you while Mike is uh, reconnecting. And I, I know uh, if you saw the broadcast last week, then I, I know that you were uh, really encouraged and stirred in your spirit. And man, just the the incredible work, the creative work that God can do through a life never ceases to amaze me. And um, we might look at Mike's story and think, well, you know, he came through extreme conditions and he's a call with a great gift and God can do mighty things through him. But who am I? Um, uh, well, let me read a scripture because um, who you are is a born again, redeemed son, daughter of the living God. And so the creative work in you is not limited to who you or I am in the natural or in the flesh. It's, it's because of who he is. And so uh, Jesus had this question uh, that they asked, or the disciples had this question that they posed to Jesus. And they actually asked him, this is in Luke 17, verse uh, five and six, and the apostles said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. So they were asking this question and I think it takes in a lot of dynamics because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about an ongoing increase in our life, how the creativity of God increases increases uh, through the seasons of our life. As we saw through, through Dr. Mike's story of of how the situation and the conditions that he came through and what that birthed in him because he saw the creative work of God take place in his life. And that just continued to, to manifest into another season and another season in increasing manner. And we didn't even begin to tell the whole story last week. So I'm hoping that we can work this te technical difficulty out and bring Mike on here and shortly. But when Jesus was asked this question by the disciples, they said, show us how to increase our faith. And this is where Jesus replied to them. He said, the Lord answered, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, may you be uprooted and thrown into the sea and it would obey you. Uh, I, this is an incredible response, I believe, that Jesus gave because he didn't give them the response that you would think that you and I would give. Hey, you just got to be a, the power of the mountain of power of faith, mountain of faith. And you just have to have this special gift and you can, he didn't give them a pep talk. He, he, he spoke to the lowest denominator of faith. He spoke to, if you just have the slightest amount of faith, there's nothing impossible for you. That includes all of us. That includes all of us, this it's possible for all of us to experience and walk in this dynamic creativity of God uh, through the ever increasing capacity of faith that's built in us <clears throat> through the seasons of life. And so that's really encouraging. <laughs> that's, that's so amazing to me. And uh, I hope that that's the encouragement that I'm bringing to everyone who watches this broadcast, that you would walk away from this broadcast saying, I'm going to believe for something more. I'm going to look at life through a different lens. Notice I have new lenses, right? <laughs> I'm going to look at life through a different lens and, uh, and through the capacity of my father, through, through what is possible <clears throat> by believing in what he says to me. And I think that's a key thing because faith is not just generated by uh, our, our earthly desires or a whim or some idea that comes to our head. Faith is actually our response to what God is saying and doing. God initiates his creative work in our life. And faith is our response to his creativity that he has initiated in our life. As you remember weeks before, we talked about it. It begins in the heart. 
Each one of us has something that will stir in our heart. If we are walking with the Lord, if we are drawing close to him, something of the kingdom will begin to stir and come alive in our heart. And that's where it begins. And it can be as small as Jesus said, as a mustard seed and nothing will be impossible. So this is Mike's story. He, he started in the, in the worst of conditions. His life started in, in the, the worst of times being uh, the child of, of a pastor in the midst of a dictator Idi Amin ruling in the country of Uganda and everything about their culture, everything about their circumstances and their situation said they were the least, said that there was a reason why they couldn't. It was all around them. But yet we found, uh, and we will find more once we're able to reconnect <laughs> here with Dr. Mike, we will find that it's, it's even from the simplest and the least of situations that we can find the most amazing creative works of God that, that just transforms everything. And so, hello, I believe we have connected with Dr. Mike Kingsley. There he is. Dr. Mike, can you hear me? Oh, he's froze up again. There we are. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Welcome. Okay, good. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, little guy. Thank you. Thank you for persevering and finding a way to connect here tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a busy day, but uh, all, all good. I'm excited. Yes. Amen. Well, last week we 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 talked about some incredible things, and I just kind of introed uh, the evening by saying the disciples asked Jesus, how do we increase our faith? And his response was, if you have faith, even the smallest amount of faith, like a mustard seed, that there's nothing impossible. And so yes. sometimes we think someone like Dr. Mike can do amazing things because of you know his gifting and his calling and all that. And we can, we can project that onto a lot of people that are in the limelight. But the message there was that this creative, dynamic work of the Holy Spirit can find root and begin to be creative in the smallest of faith because the creativity is of God. It's his work. It's his doing and not our human capacity. Yes. And, and so you started in, in the, the smallest of conditions is where your life started. Yes. You know, there's a tendency for us to feel like we, we've been taught or let me say in our church settings, Christians have been said to feel like they need this humorous amount of uh, great faith and pile it up so that they can get to a certain place where, you know, uh, to impress God or you know, there's a tendency, that pressure that gets onto people. Mm -hmm. And especially since we are in the performance arenas, we go to performance arenas and everybody, this is good, that guy is good. And, and you know, we feel less done and we start to cut ourselves down. And, 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 and so all the things that we inject ourselves in our mind and we fail to please God in the smallest of things, the things that please God in, in, in you know, as little as, as a master seed. God saying, you know, I'm trying to make you realize that to attain me, you don't need to put on a big show. You know, all you need is to have, show me the condition of your heart. And, you know, show me the condition of your heart that's rooted in me, that's got a love for me, that's, that worships me. When you yeah. show me the condition of your heart and I can see through it and I know it belongs to me, that's the beginning of the requirement of faith. Lately, I've been talking about, I've been talking about, you know, you know, Jesus telling, you know, he, the, the disciples around him and, and he's telling them about the children, let the children, the children come to me for there is, a, is the kingdom of God, you know? Mm. And I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, while we have a passage in scripture that brings childlike faith in the midst of our life and journey. Yeah. We, we tend to think that let the superstars come to me, right? Let, wow. Not the children, but let the superstars come to me. I can do something with them. But Jesus, knowing the, 
divine yeah. creative capacity of his father said, give me the children. I, I can do anything. Yes. Yes. So because we live in these arenas of the Olympics and our thought process is set to perform, that's when we start to measure ourselves. Am I, am I powerful enough? Oh, mm -hmm. I feel so weak. I feel not strong enough. I'm not up to their level. I'm not set that mm -hmm. way. And once you bring in the equation of measuring and everything, you start to pay attention on the conditions of what others have done or accomplished. And you fail to really have a quality of life that pleases God because God has got a way. He can choose to work with you with that the simple faith you have and do so many great mighty things. And another may, God may use a different measure of faith. And for me, to go back to what you said before, it did have to begin with this humongous faith, except that I <laughs> Come on, technology, do your job. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Okay, well, when Dr. Mike gets back with this, uh, I'll let him finish his thought, and then I want to transition to, there we are. Are you there? You got it. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm here. So I could, I could not have been able to have what I have, except that if I did not go to, at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. And, and I, had, I had that faith, even to this point now, I'm realizing that I need, it, I need my faith to be as a childlike faith. Yeah, because I cannot have the I could not say I have this humongous experience in this humongous, humongous experience in, you know, healing the sick and opening blind eyes. If I start to say I do, then it's never been faith. Mm. You know, it's never yeah. been faith. Yeah, you, know, you had I, to move by faith. Know, I'm, good, I'm good at God. Who's good at God? You know, who, yeah. you know. <laughs> you know, who's good at <laughs> anything concerning God? No, if I start to bring that notion, so I'm good at the reason why I'm saying that, Brother Dan, is that I don't want our listeners to think to have this guilt trip on them that they cannot walk in the street. Yes. They cannot walk in this full measure into this dynamic capacity that God has for us. It's 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 available for all for everyone who believes. That that just blows my mind. It blows my mind. And so. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> so, Brother Mike, I want, I want to transition just a little bit because I want to show how the work of the Holy Spirit, how it, it built your faith by the creative works he did with your life and how it, it brought you to another level of faith. Because it wasn't yes. enough for to see God work in your life, but God birthed within you a vision for transformation for your whole country. Yes. How, how did God move you to start that prayer movement and begin to move in faith for the redemption of your country coming out from under the rulership of a dictator? This is going to be really good. <laughs> I don't know if it's technology or if he's pausing for effect. Amen. Okay. You know, we were driven to the place of total devastation. Mm -hmm. and, and devastation drove us to a place of desperation for God. Because when you know there is no one else who can save you, there's nobody who can deliver you, there's nobody who can come through for you, mm -hmm. and you're only left back. When you've been pushed to the wall and the, the only thing you, you're left to stand on is the wall, then you start to push back. You mm -hmm. start to say, you know what, I'm not going to let the conditions start to push me away. And so in my country, when Idi Amin was killing Christians and shutting down the church, we were left with nothing except to say, just like to the children of Israel, we were left to cry out to God. Mm -hmm. Started to cry out to God. And, and I'm talking about, we didn't go in thinking that we are so experienced at owning and containing God. We went to God knowing that if we cry out to him, that... Mm -hmm. Hang in there, everybody. We'll make it through here. <laughs> We're going to make it. Come on, technology. We can do it.
And this devastation that took place, we were, we were driven into, you know, we were driven into desperation. And that desperation brought us to the, our knees before God. And it's one of those days that we practically went before God in prayer and fasting for days. And I'm not talking about one day. I'm not talking about two. I'm not talking about a week. I'm not talking about just a month. We went in prayer and fasting for months. You know, we we wanted God to be God for us in a country that was trying to defy God. We said, if if God doesn't show himself strong for Uganda, then who else? Because we know yeah. which doctor. We know Idi Amin. We know all of these bad things that have happened. Now we want God to come through. And when that became the pivotal of our prayer, when we said we want you alone, we want only God alone, not, not the Western culture, not this, but God alone. And guess what happened? The heavens opened. Yeah. And, and when the heavens opened, Brother Dan, it found an appetite. People who are hungry. Yes. Yes, people were hungry. God responded. His spirit moved like a wave across the land of Uganda. I I, I know the story, and I, I'm anxious for everybody to hear. There you are, brother. Yes. So, so the God so, responded. And so, yes, and, and so a Uganda whose stro who's, uh, stronghold is broken. The heavens opened. That means the portals that had been closed, you know, what was used to be so difficult to do was now easy. Mm -hmm. Let's give an example to the American believer. If if what's difficult for America for the American church right now, let's look at anything that's difficult for the American church. I guarantee you, when the windows of heaven, when the heavens open here in America, okay, what has been impossible for the church to achieve, okay, will be so possible. And what do I mean? There was a time in my country when having two people give their life to the Lord was impossible. It was impossible. The Muslims were taking over. But when the windows of heaven opened, it was 100,000 people give their life to the Lord. Hmm. 100,000 people. Man. That, this, again, this blows me away because this is such a picture of the what's possible, the creativity of God. We, we want to shrink it into how it fits into my personal life, but we have no idea just yeah. how dynamic it really is. Yes, yes. And so because I was a witness of that, I, I knew that first when God's not in a place, we toil. But when God comes in the place, what used to be impossible becomes easy. Let me repeat again. When God is in the place, okay, the things that were impossible become easy. But when God's not in the place, we are toiling. And I learned a lot from Brother Dan. I would never try anything unless God backs it. Because when God backs it, what used to be difficult becomes easier to accomplish because it's got the hand of God, the creative power of God on it. Yeah. yeah. The creative, mighty power of God is on it. And mm. that's what I saw. And that's what we share with the body of Christ. What we need right now is God to come in and baptize. His creative power coming in right now. Hmm. Hang in there, everybody. We're going to make it. <laughs> Hang in there, everybody. I see everybody's comments. Man, it's such a blessing to me as we're waiting for Dr. Mike here. Uh, your blessings and, and your comments are incredible. There we are, Dr. Mike. Yes. No, what I want to share with the believers to today is that we don't want them to feel like, you know, they have to work so hard to praise God. What we need is a visitation of God. Yes. Because every place that God has landed, every place around the world God has landed, has left an effect. History has been written. And the testimony has been of God, not man. Mm -hmm. The testimony has been of God, not man. Mm -hmm. Hear me well. The testimony of the places that God has visited has been of him to glorify himself. So mm -hmm. for, for those of us who are here right now, especially in the midst of COVID, all we have to do is to invite him in. Mm -hmm. and when you can invite him in right in our home, right in our sphere of influence. Great and mighty things 
can are going to happen in the name of Jesus. Because I Amen. Amen. You know, that reminds me real quick of what we talked about with Daniel. When they were taken captive into Babylon, there were conditions that were placed on them from the Babylonian system. And Daniel said, no, we're not bowing to the Babylonian system. We are going to no, dictate the, what our life will look like here according to the kingdom of God, our faith in our God. And so, um, but Brother Mike, I want to I transition a little bit because um, – I see this progression of faith and of the creative power of God in your life. And once you begin to see national transformation in the country of Uganda, Uganda wasn't big enough. No, it wasn't. The world began to stir in your heart. See, this is how the creativity of God works. He creates and works in our life and your, your vision and your faith grows to another level. And so how did America get on your radar? Uh, I, I remember, I remember this to this day. I'm, I'm in a conference in Uganda. And I, again, I'm so desperate for God to, I started to travel in different other, other countries. And Hold on there. Hold on, everybody. This is so good. You, I, I want you to hear it. Hmm. I want to hear the word of God. I want you to pick me up and use the man of God that's going to prophesy to speak and call my name. I, I literally told him that let him call my name. In my put on the conference, mm. you know, you put on the conference. So I went late, so 10,000 people, I'm at the back of the meeting. And the preacher who was preaching that day, he stopped and he said, where is my kingdom? Where is my kingdom? That's when you know that God's creative. You know, if God can call you out about 10,000 people, and you're at the back, the least of the least at the back, you know, this is going to be good. So I didn't want to get out because I thought there was other great kings, but, you know, I didn't want to get out. I looked everywhere. And he said, I'm not going to preach anything until I see. So I raised up my head and the people start to shout, it's here, it's here, it's here. So I started to run. He said, run quick. I went to the pulpit and he gave me a prophetic word. He says, from now, from today, God's, God is elevating your your footsteps and putting your print in other nations and it started to mention the united states of america as one of that those countries that the lord will have mm. you know well praise god <laughs> praise god and guess what? we're gonna make it come on come on technology And, and, and guess what happened? Then, then the, the journey began for me to get over here. Long story short, our, our, our minutes won't even let us share. I landed in America and I shared with you how I got over here. Hey. The man of God. And I landed in, in Dallas, Texas. And I prayed for the man of God, who the Lord had sent me to pray for. You remember what I told you about, you know, where the devil hell that I prayed for who was in a hotel room, who was going to commit suicide and kill himself, divine appointed all the way from Uganda to the United States. When I don't didn't have an address, I didn't have nobody, and God had me here. And I'm, the ministry began on that very after after that night. You know, I didn't even get to sleep at the hotel where the, I met the gentleman who was about to take his life, except that God gave me a word for him just like I was given a word when I was there and I meet him and God gives me a word. He sets, up, sets him free. We go back to his home and a mighty move of God began in his house. And from that time on, God just began to spread my ministry, you know, all over the country. And that's when you and I met at one of those. Mm -hmm. times. Yeah. And at that time, I didn't know any of, of the backstory. I didn't know anything. All I knew was when I sat next to you at that comp that meeting, 
the Lord spoke to me and said, hold on to this guy. There was a sense of destiny in, in what he said to me. And, and brother, we've held on to each other for 20 years. And the creativity of God has only continued yeah. to grow and continue to increase. And, and so, um, man, I, I think we, I think we need to bring you back again, Dr. Mike and do what we need to we're do. Gonna, we're definitely going to do it, man of God. We can recap a little bit, but I really want to get into where, what you're doing now because God put the nations on your earth and now on your heart, and now he's actually opened the door for you to touch the nations of the world. How, does, how did that happen? <laughs> well, you know the story. You, you and I have been together as we've traveled. Uh, it's mm -hmm. the Lord together. We, when it's nations that are supposed to be birthed inside of you, then God will activate, will activate the path, and mm -hmm. and He will He will make the connections and the provision mm -hmm. and everything. Let me say this to people who are until until God has birthed that which He say to you, until that happens, you got to hold. Thank you, Lord, for, for your amazing word tonight. We, we Today, will come back and recap this, but let's go ahead. Yeah. Today, when we talk about World Trump and television, being able to reach 150 nations and over mm -hmm. 300 million people are able to watch, it was the nations that God was talking about. Mm -hmm. And after waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, a day came where that dream and that idea, that creative power of God could not be stopped anymore, except that God would be able to unveil this vision of television. And the reason for television is because the gospel could be preached mm -hmm. in North Africa, in Asia, in South America, here in the United States, you know, mm -hmm. by the power of God. And so I'm excited to tell our believers again, it goes back to that childlike faith that we're mm -hmm. talking about. Just only to fulfill his heart. We're not fulfilling our heart, fulfilling father's heart, because it's, it, it's God's desire to touch his nation. You know, mm -hmm. it comes a we can just. While we're having technical difficulty, I just want to welcome Dr. Glendon Rudder. I just see you posting my my brother from Trinidad and Tobago. We we need to have you on the broadcast uh, someday soon. Uh, Dr. Mike, uh, go ahead. So so right now we're able to talk about nations, 150 nations. Why? Because God birthed nations way before. God made the nations way before. He spoke about the nations. He decreed nations. He prophesied nations. And we've been about nations, even in the United States, the people groups that we've been able to speak to. So when, when we see the satellite in South America on and people are watching World Trump television, we are, we're saying God spoke nations. When we see, you know, Far East on Asia side, you know, the people there are watching World Trump we say, oh, God spoke the nation. Even before we can fly in that country, the signal is already going over there to reach God's people for the kingdom of God. When we talk about North Africa and the Middle East, God spoke nations for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. <laughs> um, I want to interject this again while the technology is holding up. Um, I just had this picture of you, Dr. Mike, when you were a child. Uh, in those horrendous conditions in Uganda, bombs going off, stepping over dead bodies, and, and the chaos of, of your childhood, God knew you today. He knew your today back then. Yes. And it's the faithfulness of God to administrate the creative process in our life from alpha to omega, from the beginning to the end, he's engaged, he's committed, he's faithful and able to administrate the creative work in our life from the beginning to the end and every point in between. Every point and every detail, he doesn't miss it. He knows it and he, he knows how to follow through with what he said. 
And that's why I'm able, you, you're able to look at the timeline of everything and say, okay, this meant that. When God said this, this is what he meant for him to fulfill what he said. And that's very true. Yes. And in, and in those moments where we feel inadequate, where we feel unable, uh, our circumstances are so heavy, we have to remember that God is outside of all that. He's not under the rule of those things. And he's still, the scripture says he works all things together for our good. So he's, he, he uses all that as part of his creative process in, in our life. Amen. Amen. No, I'm excited, brother. I'm looking forward to even more for what God has in, in this journey together and what God has called us to do and, and serve him because the world is ready for the harvest. Yeah. And he set the stage. God knew that in 2021, he's setting the stage for the greatest harvest. Who knew in 2021, 20 years ago, we would be able to have the gospel transmitted in this kind of technology, even what we're doing right now, except he knows the times, he knows the seasons, he nothing misses God, nothing yeah. catches him off God. Yeah. Now I remember, I still remember the day you called me and said, "Hey, I want. There's a TV studio here. Let Let's go talk to them and check it out." And before we walked out of that office, we were signed up to to <laughs> go on the air and, and do a weekly broadcast. And it was just, it just came out of our spirit. It was the right thing to do. Amen. And after six months of that, um, we saw so much that God did through that time. Uh, but God spoke to us and said, I, I want you to have 24-7 broadcasting your own network. And that burst in our heart uh, during that time. And, but there was a seven-year period where we had, to, we had to wait on God and let God birth it. That's the beauty of World Trumpet Television. It was literally birthed by God and in God's way. God. Yeah. Waiting seven years, complete year, by the grace of God. Wow. You know, amen. 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 Well, brother, well, if this technology will let us, can you just say a, a prayer over uh, everybody watching? Say, Father, we thank you for your creative power. Hmm. I sense there are people here today that want to see you in a new way they've never seen you before. They want to experience God like they've never seen you before. Bring a fresh wind, a fresh touch, a fresh way of them knowing you, a deeper revelation they have never experienced before. May you bring a rejoicing. May you bring an activation. May you bring back the authority and dominion of, of them being excited about what you've called them to do. Purposes and dreams being activated for them to run, come back into the field, into the harvest, to do the work of the ministry with joy. And Amen. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> well, this has been amazing. Um, I thank you for everybody's encouragement on your comments that you, in spite of the technical difficulty, they're hearing the message and they're, they're being encouraged. And uh, so, Brother Mike, um, I don't know if this was the enemy or it was just technology at its worst, but there was a lot there was a, a lot opposition to your story being but we're not we're not stopping we're not deterred your message is going all around the world and yeah, i'm right. so thankful yeah. for the creative work of god in your life brother thank you thank you i'm here too i'm, I'm so grateful to you man amen well i look forward to the programming that we will collaborate on here in the near future and uh really? that's hey, got great things in store i'm wait i can't wait for the for the message and the kingdom message that you're bringing to World Trumpet Television Weekly and everything that God's doing. Amen. It's such a joy. And, and then the, when, whenever we're together, kingdom things happen. Yeah. And then one day we get to go together to visit your hometown of Kampala, Uganda. And I get to meet your father, a man of... Uh, a renowned faith and someone I deeply respect and can't wait to meet. Uh, so I look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you everybody for, for joining us again this week. Um, I again apologize for the technical difficulties, but man, I, I believe you, you got the gist of the message and you can see 
how the, the incredible creative work of the Spirit of God can take a life from the worst of conditions and uh, to the point of transformation of their country to now affecting other countries around them, and then coming to America in such a dynamic, prophetic way and ultimately into birthing a television network that's reaching over 200 nations around the world. It, this is the creative work of God, and, and it's the same creative work of the Spirit that's resonant and available in every one of our lives. And so I just encourage you tonight. I, I Hopefully we stirred you up by faith that tomorrow, even tonight, there's a new lens that's birthing in your spirit that you will see life through the creativity of the Spirit of God. So we love you, and we'll talk to you soon.